College Board is an organization with more than 100 years managing the tests required to gain entry into most of the colleges in the U.S. The most famous test the company enforces is the SAT, and I guess you know that if you want to go to college, because you must take it. It is a big filter in the educational system of the country, which tries to give every college the most appropriate students for them. More than 6,000 post-secondary educational institutions in the U.S. claim membership in the company's system. They pay the College Board to enforce the SAT. What College Board delivers to their associates is the grades of each student on the test. From there, the universities begin to interpret the information as best it suits them to decide who of their applicants can attend their institution. College Board works as a non-profit organization. However, they charge the students for almost every single step in the process, and they have a competitor in the market, ACT, which works similarly. Same as any other social activities, education had changed drastically in the 20th century. SAT is not the exception. The different ways to enforce the test have caused changes in the name of the exam. In this video, we're going to cover the various changes in the SAT history, reflecting the evolution of the U.S. educational system and society over the last hundred years. Before the creation of the College Board in 1900, most universities coordinated specific tests that required the applicants to travel to take them. Then, a group of colleges in the U.S. Northeast states formed a nationally coordinated test to provide testing for applicants to their universities, giving birth to the College Board. In 1901, 973 students in the U.S. and Europe took part in the first essay-based tests, applying to the colleges under the College Control Board, being evaluated under responses to each essay and at five different levels. In the same years, a group of psychologists enforced IQ tests in schools, trying to find potential students for colleges. And during World War I, the U.S. Army developed IQ tests to recruit soldiers for going to war. That led to the popularity of IQ tests, leading the College Board to develop a test based on those questions. The product College Board delivered was called SAT, an acronym at the moment for Scholastic Aptitude Exam. The exam consisted of seven different sections and was designed by a psychology professor at Princeton. 8,000 students had to answer 315 questions in 90 minutes, and the sections included in it were changing in the coming years. For example, the College Board extended the time to answer the questions to two hours. In the 30s, the College Board made the first significant changes to the test. Now, it's split it into two parts, verbal and mathematical, a structure which lasts more than 70 years. Then, in the 1940s, the popularity of the SATs expanded, thanks to a lot of veterans taking the test, taking advantage of the benefits program they got after the war, widely known as the GI Bill. In 1947, 49% of the applicants taking the SATs were veterans. Also, the College Board developed a machine-based system to score the exams due to the enormous number of applicants in these years. Those changes and the need to compare results from different years forced the College Board to develop a new scoring scale, the same system that remained till 1995. The idea was to standardize the scores via test equating, a way to equalize the students' grades when the exams they took had different difficulty levels. That would also reveal an average score for the verbal and math sections of the exam every year. So what happened? In the 60s, the average score slowly went down, reflecting a demographic problem in the U.S. society. At this point, a noticeable correlation became observable between the income of students' families and their score on the SAT. But simply, families with higher incomes could send their children to better schools where they could find better teachers who could prepare them for the test in a better way. A good score in the test could send them to a qualified college and then help them get a better job with excellent benefits and a high salary. As socioeconomic status decreased, the access to a good education goes down too. So does the SAT score and the chances to improve the economic situation. It is a cycle that is hard to break, but it's fair to say that the SAT is not creating this inequality, it only reflects it. Students can take the test multiple times and they can choose which score the College Board can send to universities. This was made possible through the implementation of a policy called score choice. However, some highly rated colleges and universities require their applicants to submit the scores for all the tests they have taken. Moreover, some colleges take into account the date of the tests and the submitted score. The most recent scores have a clear advantage. Another side effect of the SAT is a lucrative industry developed to prepare students for the exam. On the internet, you can find a multitude of preparation courses for the SAT. This all began following the popularity boost of the test in post-war years. Kaplan Inc. was the first company to provide a 64-hour program course to prep for the SAT. Of course, this industry got censored by the population because it contributes to the undue influence of the economic status of the student in the test's exam, which we mentioned before. 
The college board argue that the SAT is designed to be untrainable, but many programs assert that the students who take their preparation courses improve their grades by 30 points between the verbal and math sections. Beyond the college board, other studies report an increase of 60 points, approximately, in the overall score of the exam if students got coaching before taking it. Then, in 2016, the College Board developed a free online training course on the Khan Academy platform, with the idea of countering the influence of income level in the test's preparation. The SAT system can improve. It is changing the approach of the system to a more student-oriented rather than a college-oriented. And the more the College Board pays attention to the needs of students, the better. There are countries where the college admission system is much more tricky and stressful. The Sonyeon, for example, the name of Korea's admission test to college, ends up being a key factor in their culture, and since childhood, students only talk about it. We made a video explaining the situation broadly if you want to check it out. Now it's time for you to click the like and subscribe button, then feel free to share our content in your social media, we would strongly appreciate it. That's all for today, stay fresh.